The View starts now with Whoopi, Sarah Haynes, Joy Behar, and Sonny Hostin. Now, let's get things started. what the current White House resident would say when he stood before the United Nations. And right before we went on air, we got our answer. <laughs> Take a look. <laughs> the United States has great strength and patience. But if it is forced to defend itself or its allies, we will have no choice but to totally destroy North Korea. Rocket Man is on a suicide mission for himself and for his regime. The United States is ready, willing, and able. But hopefully, this will not be necessary. That's what the United Nations is all about. He needs to re learn to read a prompter. The guy does not know how to read a prompter, much less lead this country. But I wonder if his if his remarks were scripted. I mean, it looks scripted. It, it to me. looked they looked scripted to me, and and it looked as if Rocket Man, that term uh, about Kim Jong Un, w was scripted. And what was terrifying to me is he I think wasn't only talking about defensive action, but he left open the um, possibility of preventative action against North Korea. And so, how do you go about destroying a country with 25 million people well, in it? Well, also, if you destroy... That's a war crime. But if you destroy North Korea, you destroy South Korea and Japan, and possibly fall out into China, <clears throat> and what have you. So, there's no way that can happen. It's not going to happen. I don't know. I mean, is he talking about a nuclear option? JFK that, that was a very about? in a similar position. Everybody who's old enough to remember, or if you read about the Cuban Missile Crisis, yeah. he t talked like that. And then they made a deal behind the scenes. But I feel a little Hopefully, more comfortable with JFK. I know that. <laughs> well, JFK was was a Maybe popular a president. This guy is not. Well, also, but, they need but to you, had a, a you had a completely different thing. When you tweak the nose of the puppy, you will get bit. Yeah. You know, and I just feel like you yeah. can't. Maybe. You know. Well, you know, this is the unstable versus unstable. You know, when you yeah. have one guy who's saying, you know, if we have to take care of our people, we're going to destroy. That's not the language. Of, you know, we got no diplomats. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We don't have people who are saying, hey, listen, man, there's a better way to have this conversation. Now, yeah. I know a lot of his fans will say, yeah, that's tough talk. Mm. Mm. Well, it's one of the reasons we don't engage in this is because just because the other folks are nuts, we're not supposed to be nuts. We're supposed to keep this stuff from happening, exactly. not encourage it. Well, he was also really tough on Iran. Like he, oh, yes, with, he with um, you know, Iran right now is an ally and they were sitting there, he was sitting in the, the audience when they, and they showed him when he was yeah. saying they're not living up to their end of the deal. The ambassador, the Iranian. Yeah, the ambassador. Yeah. To, and, and he kind of went after him in front of the group. So the dynamics behind kind of putting two major powers on defense. Yeah. yeah. It, it was kind of, it was an well, here's aggressive what he approach. Said. Here's right. what he aggressive. said, baby. But the Iran deal was one of the worst and most one-sided <laughs> transactions. That deal is in, an embarrassment to the U.S. and I don't think you've heard the last of it. Believe me, it's time for the entire world to join us in demanding that Iran's government end its pursuit of death and destruction. Um, yeah, it's very aggressive. You know, I, I, I was at the UN a couple of months ago um, moderating a panel and I was asking some of the folks over there what they thought of Nikki Haley's um, job. How, you know, how is she doing? And I got all positive remarks about her and that really gave me a better sense of security yeah. because I thought, well, then she is really practicing uh, diplomacy, which is really about handling affairs without arousing hostility. That's the Webster's Dictionary. And then I saw this this morning. Yeah. And, and I thought that's the very antithesis of diplomacy. Like, why, why would he do that, do you, you think? You know, but I was glad he's eight... calling Prompter because he can yeah. get a lot more loose when he's oh, on yeah, his own. Absolutely. So at least the fact that someone, someone was a little measured to put some words to up put there Rocket for him. Man in there, though? Yeah. I think that, he I actually that. think you that think might be a that? choice, though, because when you think about it, it takes one to know 
one. Yeah. You know, we talk about Kim Jong Un being somewhat, you know, immature, going into power, young, being a little, you know, erratic out there. He might take that as a, a, a oh, a rocket man. You know, like the, he might actually like the a, term. A I don't of, know. Oh, like it's, well, there's a couple okay. of things. Number one. Something has to be done about North Korea. I don't really know what it is because they are a rogue nation in many ways And I, I'm worried about them not that they will use this bomb against us I don't think that will happen, but they are in such dire straits there that they will be selling it to terrorists Well, that was the you know, the, the, when, the, the, when yes. Clinton was in one of the when uh, <coughs> Bill was in one of the questions that I asked him is what are the things you regret when you left? He said, my, one of my regrets was when I left, I had a choice. I could go to Israel or I could go to Korea. Mm -hmm. He said, because what I used to do is he would, you know, make a trip. Yeah. And he would say, now look, here's what's going to, we're going to give you the money to take care of your people. You Because all you make is arms. That's yeah, all you make. So you're not going to sell your arms to anybody. You're not going to sell your arms to anybody, and you're not going to mess with your neighbor. You know why? Because if you mess with your neighbor, we're going to have to get involved, and you don't want that. Mm -hmm. We got a deal. We're good. So the diplomacy of one-on-one, -on -one, that stopped uh, with... Um, Trump. No, no, oh. no. It stopped with Bush. Bush, Bush yeah. Because Bush did not go. And so that's why I remember the dad was so sort of getting a little annoyed with everybody, with yeah. America. So now when... Uh, Kim Jong Un, or, or, Un, the son, the son, son yeah. Un. Comes in and he's got, you know, maybe he got rid of Pop. We don't know what happened to Pop. No. We don't know. No, I mean, I mean, this is this is <laughs> the reality. He, he got rid of a lot of folks, Ooh, so we don't know what him. happened. But he came in quite aggressively, and you know, we managed to sort of keep him in check. And now, yeah. it's like he's he has he's emboldened by someone who feels the same way he does about Korea. You but know what I'm saying? But he wants something. Kim Jong-un wants something. They have to figure out what he wants and go to the table. For eight years when Obama was in office, we never heard about nuclear war. This one comes in during the campaign. He starts talking about, well, you know, what about nuclear well, you weapons? Can't tweak. See, why you does can't he, tweak people but why is, they don't like it. But why does he have to be such a startup? Why does he have to be so provocative all the That's time? We're elected. talking about yeah. annihilating millions of people. Yeah. This is not baby stuff this is a guy who was, who was leading the apprentice as now is talking about nuclear war i can't take it was when i was watching though there were things that i took from what he was saying and then when i saw people analyzing it afterwards mm -hmm. it was actually uh, opposite of what i had just seen and one of the okay. things being i think it was smart to say we're not looking to impose our way of life on you. Because I think there is a respect for the fact that, you know, uh, nation building, Trump said, yeah. it, it, you know, we, in America, we do not seek to impose our way of life on anyone. No, just on Americans. Right. Well, yeah. we're going to start with baby steps. But, he doesn't seem to um, mind that the Russians but, would but like no, to impose their way of life. Actually, I thought it was an important note because one of the biggest criticisms of Bush and his era was that we went into nation build and it, we had no way out. There was right. no exit plan. Right. So I do agree that making the distinction that we can re we can respect that we are separate nations unless we need to defend people. See, but I, he didn't. I read talk that. About, I took mm -hmm. that differently. That's what because the, because the issue sometimes is you hear that very language from dictators. That's Vladimir what they Putin. Said. Oh, did they? They, they, Vladimir Putin oftentimes says, you know, we're not pl putting our way of life on anybody else, but you need to respect that this is our way of life. And so a dictator very much says, just don't bother but me. But do you and see I the flip of you. that? Because if you're not Putin and you say, we are not going to impose our way of life, just let us. I'd be okay if he wasn't such a Putin fan. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know, Russia could be considered just as big a nuclear threat as North Korea. Yeah. But yet he's in bed with them. He loves them. And all his minions love the Russians. And yet they're a nuclear country. How do we know what they're going to do? Well, you know, he was very thankful that they were on board uh, along with China uh, against oh. uh, Korea. Yeah. Uh, so he thanked them for that. And, you know, I, again, if you don't name call... Hmm. And nose pull. Rocket. I don't mind cojones. I don't mind that. But I like the way you said that. Cojones. Yes. Yeah, but I don't like threats either. I don't like. I don't like but I don't, don't wipe but, you off the face well, of the earth what, and all that. I don't like well, that. Well, that's. I, I yeah. get that. I don't mind strong talk. I don't mm -hmm. mind strong yeah. talk. That's what you do. Yeah. But when you then 
turn around and do exactly what the other people are doing, <coughs> it becomes problematic for me. I can't see any upside from this because now <coughs> when little kids are seeing this on the news scary it's scary it's very scary Joy's they petrified can smack, and she, I'm well, scared. Okay, yeah but I, and, and I think this audience is scared they gasped when they heard what well he because said. It, when was the last time you heard we're gonna wipe you off the face of the Never. earth I mean it's been a, yeah, it's long, been a long time, time. yeah, yeah. I mean, and we heard Bush uh, speak strongly um, after 9-11 but it that was different it was it was this strength that I, I think we all related no to, call. as opposed to this. <laughs> yeah, no which is there was also not a divided yeah. time. That was something well, when, that, they, when, they when that happens, we were, everyone yeah. came yeah. together. Not really. It, not it, really. It, we'll talk right about on the heels of 9 11. We'll talk about it when we get back. Later, the devil inside. Are the co hosts guilty of hiding secrets that make them terrible people? This week on The View, you're in for the hottest topics around. And our political views on fire. First, Joe and Mika hit the table. Then, the one and only. The Mooch. The Mooch. Mooch, yeah. <laughs> Anthony Scaramucci is co-hosting. Plus, we've got Terrence Howard and an epic performance from Little Big Town. It's all happening on The View this week on ABC. Your fall forecast is still looking gorgeous on View Your Deal. We partner with vendors for at least half off this season's hottest beauty products. Don't miss it. Head to ViewYourDeal.com. Hold on. Sometimes we have to make slight corrections. What yeah, I just didn't mean to use the term ally when referring to Iran. No. I was talking specifically no. about the agreement yes. and that he had very aggressive language as the, the ambassador sat there. Right. It was not that they are allies, so I just want to clarify. I, I not. understood that. Thank you, Sonny. <laughs> <laughs> well, we always like to try to clean it up because, you know, there is another network on that. If we don't clear it up, they see, they don't know anything. Yeah. <laughs> I cannot be complicit to fake news. That's right. <laughs> They're just fake news and women who just talk. <laughs> <laughs> On a lighter side, you know, White House domestic matters question this weekend is, wow, the first couple was at a military event in Maryland, and they had what people are calling a bit of an awkward moment together. <laughs> we just checked it out. We're going to show you, see what you think. The President of the United States, Donald Trump. Thank you, honey. Thank you. You go sit down, honey. Thank you very much. <laughs> and see, you see, that was the that's the that's the audience's immediate reaction. I for a high five, but that's just me. I Maybe mean, a fist bump. I mean, he scrammed her too. He was like, scram, 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 scram. Go sit down. <laughs> I have had warmer interactions with Bill O'Reilly. <laughs> you think of him, you have to chuckle a little bit. He just shook his wife's hand after her intro. Yeah. I mean, but, but think about it. We've all been married, right? I don't think I have ever had a handshake with my husband. No, who does that? I've never shaken his hand. She probably says, don't touch me. But when I, well, I have, right? I have when I'm a, I'm a little annoyed and Max tries to come in and he's like, let's hug it out. And I'm a little annoyed. I do this pat. Pat, pat, and he goes, quit dude patting me. Like, he knows yeah. that means things are not okay. Yeah, a handshake. I no, don't, never again. Mm. They're not cozy. They're not cozy. They yeah, not they're cozy. not cozy. I don't care what anybody speaking, says. Speaking of cozy, <coughs> nice displays of affection, big little lies, one big on Emmy night. Oh. And Nicole Kidman congratulated <laughs> her TV husband, Alexander Skarsgård, with a kiss on the lips. And she oh. also kissed her real life husband, Keith Urban, a few times. She must just be a kissy kind of girl. She's a lip kisser. Mm -hmm. I mean, so do you do you go for the lip or the cheek? And then the other question when is, is Alexander should she have... guard, you go for the lips. <laughs> <laughs> He's cute. I just no. said that. He was one of the hottest celebrities. We had to pick yeah. someone. You did so, pick him. He's so hot. But she's in front of her husband, though, right? Whatever. Yeah, but she did a double kiss. A woman, it was like a... But a woman who kisses a man in front of her husband is not going to do it behind her husband's back. Right. Like no. it's, That's a good point. Yeah. yeah. But I don't know. Like, 
the double kiss. I mean, if anyone watched Big Little Lies, that was such sex a good scene show. Were something else between those two. Yeah. And they were very comfortable. Yeah. Well, they're I actors. Just, they're I actors. mean, you're a lip kisser. Uh, only with women. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yesterday I kissed Candace. <laughs> Just because I don't agree with her politically doesn't mean I can't, you know, snuggle with the girl. <laughs> I like her. Speaking of snuggling. <laughs> <laughs> Robert Mueller is aggressively trying to get to the bottom of Russia's <laughs> snugly involvement in the election. Oh, yeah. And well, Hillary mm. says, depending on the outcome, she would not rule out challenging whether the election was legitimate. <coughs> um, wow. Yeah. That's... So what is that? What do you think that means? About Hillary? Yeah, or any of it. It's well, not a good conversation go to be having. Like, I, I, don't, I don't think it's helpful right now. I get the book. I get the why things happened the way they did so mm -hmm. we can fix them moving forward. Mm -hmm. But we've all said, even she said when she talked about attending the inauguration, that this is what we do. We pass power off peacefully. We do all these things. Yeah. I, don't, I think it's just right now just not a conversation to have. If she wanted to say kind of tongue in cheek, like, we'll see what Mueller comes up with and stuff, that's fine. But planting seeds of doubt in an already divided nation when we've talked about Russia destabilizing a, de destabilizing a democracy, I think it's our leader's time right now to say, let's just see what they find. Let's be together. Let, well, we're okay. Yeah. Like, th that's they a dangerous will, and thing. And they will do that. They will do that. Anyway. Yeah. But as far as her delving into why the, that, that this was an illegitimate election, I think she has plenty of evidence. It's juicy for you, Joy. I think not just for me, for the American people. She has plenty of evidence that they, uh, the Russians cyber attacked us. Yeah, I was watching Rob Reiner this morning and he was talking about how if they had dropped a bomb on us, we would all be up in arms. And yet cyber attacking us was very dangerous. They've already done something with our electric grids. Yeah. There are things that are going to happen because of these cyber attacks. You have to investigate this. You cannot let this just go. Investigate but, but don't divide us further. But the country is divided already. What do you mean it divided? Is divided. And, and let's face it, is it divided. I, I often think if if the election was flipped on its head, let's say there was evidence that the Russians um, helped elect Hillary, and that there were the, this close vote, we would still be in election recount right now. Of course. We would still be in election recount. Donald Trump would have unleashed a legal team. Well, let me ask this question yeah. then. So <coughs> they find, say, say Mueller finds something. Mm. Mm -hmm. What do you think is going to happen? What do you think can happen? Yeah. What can legally happen? Because I don't know that you redo the election. I don't no. know if Pence then, if he is removed, if uh, the new guy is removed, if it's Pence then takes his, I don't, like, yeah. how does this work? Because we've never sort of been in this situation before. Well, it depends well, on the level of involvement, right? So yeah. let's say, uh, let's say Trump is, in, is found to be complicit mm -hmm. and then he's impeached, but let's mm -hmm. say P Pence is under investigation too, isn't he? Yeah. The entire campaign then is. Then it's Paul Ryan. So you're gonna go down the line. Yeah. Then it's Orrin Hatch, what and a then group. It's, then I, mean, <laughs> right? I mean, we're in uncharted territory. <laughs> but then if you have to go down through everybody, yeah. that goes on for four years and then we're at a new election. Until it gets yeah, to Scott true. Payo. <laughs> people that say, you know, with this divi division, we're not moving forward on anything. So to me, it's like we can hypothesize and talk about what if and all right. this, or we could start fixing health care and we could start fixing some of the things that people are, are trying to. I don't want the I don't want all if the scandal comes out because Mueller finds it fine. Mm -hmm. But to just sit here and say, well, what if and what if you know, yeah. I want people doing their jobs. I we, think we they're trying to, to do that. Do I think people, they're trying yeah, to yeah, do that. But I mean, that. having these conversations on the side aren't productive. Except that okay. because we've never but we have to have them now because you don't want to have it at the time you discover you have to have it. You have to have some idea of what's coming. And I don't think anyone knows because we've never seen this before. Right. We may be the first people saying, so what is, what, how is this going to roll? Yeah. You know, who is actually going to be investigated if they're investigating everyone? Mm -hmm. Who then takes power? It's an important question and yeah. we got to ask it. But we also got to say, <laughs> we'll be back. What are we selling? <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back. Still ahead.
defensive foul. The sports superstar busted for using a secret social media account to hit back at trolls. BuzzFeed just posted 12 signs you're secretly a terrible person. The list includes taking more than one sample at the grocery store, <laughs> not respecting personal space. Well, that's Sarah. <laughs> Having a vanity plate. So far, I'm two out of three. <laughs> Does anyone, anyone at this table, what? maybe used to have a vanity plate? Anyone? Oh, slutty. <laughs> Sunny. <laughs> but she doesn't anymore. Well, I no. had a very good reason for having that vanity what plate. Was that? So my vanity plate said Hostin on the back of it until recently when my car was stolen. So I don't have it anymore. But uh, when I was uh, prosecuting cases, I was always like just running into the into the courtroom, kind of almost late. And so all the marshals knew my last name. And so I parked right in front of the courthouse and I wouldn't get a ticket. I say that's a good one, right? Come on. Note on your car. Yeah. This one's good. Don't yeah. bother this me. This one's good. Well, they they could have recognized the car too. Just as yeah, they, right. But, but, one, but one of them told me we don't know it's your car, and I was like, hmm. See, the, I the gotta thing fix about the that. that's dumb is that the police, I don't think, care for that. I think the cops the sort of look. Well, my favorite ones are when they have titles like doctor or something, and it's like doctor for life, or yeah. I say, you know, like, I save lives, and I'm like, thank you for telling me. Well, that. I just saw a good one actually on the highway. It was a Lamborghini, like this really fancy Lamborghini, and um, when it went by, it said haters. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. I was kind of and trying to oh, figure good. it out. Also reminds me how it, sometimes see, it takes that, me a minute. That's asking for a ticket. Haters. That guy. Yeah. yeah, haters. But that's you know what? For the, a ticket. The, the, I take I take issue with the free sample at the grocery store because. Yes. Why Some, is that? Because sometimes those people look like they're they're trying to push their wear yes. on people. No one's taking those little toothpicked foods. And yes. so as a selfless act, yes. I often will take one. I don't yes. come straight back because yes. I don't want them to remember me. I yeah. take a lap. I hit yes. the produce aisle. And then I see they look lonely and again. And you compliment them. You yeah. compliment. It's a compliment Exchange when you want to come niceties. back for more. I let them know, I too love that sausage. Thank you. Yeah. Like, it's, it's well, completely agree does, with you. Thank does you. anybody here invent hashtags for themselves and use them in everyday conversation? That's annoying. I do verbal hashtags, <laughs> but they're self-deprecating. And they're and witty. They're wit. They're super smart. And uh -huh. I, I, they're annoying, but I, 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 I'm not like I mean, flattering like, myself or speaking in third person. I just love the example, though. Like, um, <coughs> hashtag crazy. <laughs> hashtag, oh my God. Hashtag, they're not even real hashtags, you guys. How about hashtag farmer's daughter? Okay, enough with <laughs> my overalls. <overall. laughs> Sonny, you know what? Or not Sonny, sorry, Joyce. Hashtag Joy. farmer's daughter who got knocked up. <laughs> <laughs> no, but when I put these on, I looked at it, I was like, oh, they fit. They're overalls. And I remembered college a little too, you know, I, they were. We, we were had been talking about the fact that the three date rulers disappeared and uh, <laughs> that there might be a story, uh, <laughs> you know, having sex on the third date doesn't know it's changed. How long did you so, wait to have the sex? So <laughs> clearly the sex? there is some story that some folks <laughs> seem to know that they want Joy to tell. Mm -hmm. um, so go ahead, Joy. Well, I don't see the point of waiting, frankly. If there's a sexual attraction and you're both adults, then just go for it. And <laughs> Joy. The story is uh, when I met Steve, who I'm married to, mm -hmm. okay? True. Only True. works retroactively. So I met him and I was going out with him for about six months. <laughs> and my Aunt Rose, who is deceased, so she's not going to watch this. Maybe. She could be. I don't know. <laughs> she said, do you, are you sleeping with him? And I said, do you think I should? How old were you at the time? 40. Ah. <laughs> And she said, well, how long can you hold out? And I said, would you believe two hours? <laughs> now, you saw what you, you saw someone you liked. It, it is one of the very few times that I have exhibited slutty behavior. And, 
And I felt so guilty, I married the guy. <laughs> but okay. you waited... Hello! <laughs> yeah, but how long did you wait before you married him? 29 oh, well. years. No, I think it was about... Uh, well, we're married at six years, yeah. and we're together like 36. Clearly, she has her priorities straight. Years. The commitment's years. difficult. The sex is easy. Yeah. Two hours, 29 years. What's I mean, it's hey. a long time, I know. But I, I am afraid of commitments, I guess. <laughs> Just not the carnal ones. No. Well, right. interesting. Right. Happy? Happy she I told the story? Happy. So. I love it so much. <laughs> yeah. What else? We're going to move to uh, a South Carolina fifth grade teacher has been suspended oh. hmm. for an assignment that asked students to imagine that they were in the KKK and justify their treatment of black people. Now, the teacher also asked them to imagine they were freed slave and see if they would be satisfied with their new life. Now, some people got very upset about this, yeah. and, and so she's been suspended. But isn't this what we're asking kids to do in terms of critical thinking, to think yeah. about what it would be if you were in, in, those, in that situation, and how would you justify it? Why yeah. would you be satisfied by being a freed slave, though? I don't understand that part. See, if you would be satisfied with your new life. There's almost an implication that, you were, uh, that you know, when you were a slave, you were happier, you know? No, but I think she's trying to put these kids in shoes they'll never walk in. This was a time they didn't experience. Yeah. And I think to ask in this day and age for empathy and to understand why people are different from you mm -hmm. is to do social experiments when you say Hey, how do you think you'd feel if you were here? Yeah. I think it's fascinating because kids that lack empathy turn into people I don't that think will that never this is grasp. What this is about. But I think it is. I don't think it's about empathy. But I, no. think that, I think that her question is because people always assume that once the slaves were free, mm -hmm. they were happier. Yeah. But no. in fact, Oftentimes, slaves did not leave the plantation because they didn't know where they were going. Yeah. They didn't know. So this requires them to think and maybe do a little investigative work exactly. to see what the yeah. next step yeah. once you're freed was and to under have some understanding. So I think it's it's kind of interesting and I'm sad that they suspended her. I, I yeah. thought that's in that an innovative case, way. In that case, it could be about empathy, but when you say reverse your roles with a KKK member, mm -hmm. I think it's it's a different thing. It's like to try to understand, like, where, why are you so hateful? Yeah, but that's, but that's, that's so, the that's, exercise. That's the yeah. Okay, because that's different said, from being to learn. But I know we want my kids to feel what someone else, so to say to them, what would it take for you to do, like, what do these people have to feel? And you can't come up with it. Oh. Yeah. Some of the yeah. drama and, and trauma of history that they never experienced will be like, well, I am having a really hard time. Well, and especially in today's day and age, when we see in Charlottesville, <coughs> Virginia, we see people with tiki torches mm -hmm. and Confederate flags from the KKK marching. I mean, I think it's a wonderful example of a teacher being provocative yeah. and trying to do what we all want, I think our ch children to, to, to know, is, to, is, is empathy. I, my kids go to a very progressive school and they do this kind of thing all the time. And we do it at home. I often say to my son and to my daughter, you know what, why do you think this person did that? Or, or you know, how would you feel if someone did that to you? Well, uh, we yeah, do it in, in psychodrama. You know, I do psychodrama. Uh, every month I have people, we do psychodrama together. And one of the things we always do is reverse roles. That's what you're doing. Really yes. describing here. Yeah. So I just would suggest to everybody, it's a very good exercise. Let's say you're having a fight with your boss and you don't know how to ask for a raise. Reverse roles with the person and see where they're coming from and be that person. And you yeah. learn so much That's by sitting in their seat. Critical That's exactly which is what, what we're talking was. about. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's a very good exercise. And critically thinking about what I need to do right now <coughs> um, comes from the fact that in order to be paid, right, <laughs> we need to. Remember. We have to allow people to sell. Okay. So we'll be back. <laughs>
better to explain to your kids, like, I made this mistake. Yeah. And you should learn from that and, and don't do what, what I did. Like, Depends on the age, you know? You don't want to tell five or six year old stuff it, like it that. It creates distrust. Because some of the stories my mom told me, <laughs> she's watching, <laughs> uh, <laughs> that she never did this and never did that. And eventually you believed her for a little and then yeah. you were like, hmm. Uh, I think she would have had more power with me if she said, you know, I made, at age appropriate times, yes, I made this I decision made mm -hmm. and this is why I, re you know, because when you see parents lying, whether it's yeah. siblings and your nephews and nieces yeah. or your parents, you're watching them, you're like, I, I feel like they can sense that. Yeah. You weren't perfect. We all know that. Yeah. Yeah. So why don't you share through the fumbles you made so they don't have to do that too? Yeah. But they Especially do it anyway. Since all your stuff's online. <laughs> most, most of it. <laughs> now, you know, right? You know, here's, most a, of it. here's the thing I learned when I was a teacher, when I took t t teaching classes. Telling is not teaching. So that it doesn't matter what you tell them. That a, a, oh. th learning is a change of behavior. That is the definition of learning. So telling is not teaching. It doesn't matter. You tell your kids, don't smoke marijuana, even though I did. They're going to do it if they're going to do it. No, but if you tell them the th reasons why, like, m maybe for uh, yeah. telling a daughter about sexual intimacy or something yes. and saying, like, you know, for girls, there's another component to it. It's very emotional. Once you've opened that door, there are things you don't well, know that's, about that's that important. they don't teach you in school or that, you know, if you kind of... That's Give different. them wisdom you learned. That's I think if you're that's having different. those that's conversations, you're already ahead of the game. I'm already a good parent, right? <laughs> yeah. Now. Well, I, I think if you can tell your child, you know, hey, I don't know what you're doing, but if you're following this, you might want to rethink it. Yeah. I know. I'm getting ready to say we'll be right back. Yeah. <laughs> Tomorrow, Terrence Howard has a sneak peek at the explosive season premiere of Empire. Plus, 2020's hitting the big 4-0, and David Muir and Elizabeth Vargas look back at the most unforgettable... It's gonna be an emotional roller coaster, but somehow I'm gonna get through it. ...controversial... I, I am on a drug, it's called Charlie Sheen. ...and historic moments. Hey, now. Listen, thanks for coming. Thanks for watching. We want you to have a great day. Take a little time to enjoy whatever view you happen upon. See you again. Woo!